29 on the positive side. I'm Courtney Courtright. Thanks so much for joining us this weekend. A man from Mount Olive is taking his passion for coloring and trying to create a world record. Here's Scott Britt's story. I love it. A big collection of hundreds of pages out of coloring books. <laughs> All colored by Scott Britt. Over 1,286. I started first a year and go to the end of the year. Coloring is his passion. It grew even more when he first came to Ambleside. We provide services to individuals with developmental disabilities. The goal of the service is to provide a meaningful day to the individuals. What started out as Scott's hobby. I've been doing this and I didn't start counting till last year. Turned into an idea. When he says he wants to set a world record, whatever it takes for us to help get him there, that's exactly what we're gonna do. They reached out to the Guinness World Records. I go and try to reach my goal. They wanna add a new category for most colorings done by one person in a year. The biggest part of what we do up here is try to help an individual achieve what their goals for their life are, not try to plan their lives for them. While they wait for Guinness to contact them, Scott is already filling in the lines on 2024. What we do up here is important and uh, seeing Scott actually do something that's important to him just makes me happy. His collection is truly impressive and good luck to Scott. We will update you when Scott hears back from Guinness. If you have a story idea, send it on over to us. We want to hear about the positive things happening where you live. Just email newsdesk at WNCT.com. You can also reach out to me on social media. Two sisters took a trip to California and came back with a mini idea that caught the attention of the Wilson community. Sandy DeLong was fired during COVID and went to Wilson to live with her parents. The timing was right, so she used the last bit of her savings to buy a food truck. It's called Yo Mama Stacks, and she's doing this with her younger sister. We were driving around and we saw this tent that was a dessert tent and we were wondering what it was and we were all about adventures so we saw that they were selling mini pancakes and we were thinking to ourselves of why Wilson doesn't have this and at that time no one in North Carolina was doing mini pancakes so uh, we decided to take a leap of faith. They have more than 2400 followers on Facebook to find out where they're set up. You can go over to WNCT.com's Food Truck Fridays. The King Drug Store lunch counter in downtown King is back open. It's one of the few lunch counters still in existence today. Chad Tucker pays a visit to his hometown drug store for some lunch and the doctor who helped care for him since he was born. We come here just about every day. Well, we have grilled cheese, pimento cheese, egg salad, and we do tea, orange eggs, lemonade. Her egg salad is superb. For nearly a hundred years, uh, we have hot dogs, thousands of meals, and generations of smiles <laughs> have crossed this lunch counter at the King Drug Store in King. Sometimes I come two times a day. So people have their own spot. Yeah, people have their own spot. Uh huh. Dr. Gail Stone has had a spot here all her life, many times right next to her dad. I used to sleep back there when daddy was here late. I would get my pill and sleep in the back. Her dad owned the drugstore and was the pharmacist. He would be here till eight or nine o'clock. Her mom ran the fountain. People say when they come here, it feels like home. I feel the same way. <laughs> and Dr. Gale served the community as a pediatrician right next door for 43 years, including helping shape this guy. I don't know of anything that really has changed except that uh, you don't see this anymore. The counter closed for a short time. And I said, my daddy wouldn't want that. So Dr. Gale brought it back. He kept it going. Kept it going. That's right, she kept it going. And so are the folks that come every day, except on Sunday. And that's a real orange aid for a taste of simpler times. I just enjoy it, it's home. And the people who make it sweet. Just seeing everybody, you know, enjoy seeing the people. There's nothing like the people in King. In King. Wow. Looking for Roy's folks. It's just home. Chat's up. It's my daddy's memory. Fox 8 News. It's the people. We love the people. 
so sweet. Now take a look at this. This week, the Lenore County SPCA rescued an owl. They got a call that an owl was in the middle of the road and it might have been hit by a car. Lenore County SPCA rescue coordinator Tiffany Jarman helped rescue this owl. They named him Tootsie. He's at the Outer Banks Wildlife Shelter recovering. You can check out this full story of what went into this rescue and more over on our website. It is an online original. More than just a place to cut hair. Next on 9 on the positive side, we're headed to Raleigh to see one barber shop that's making a big impact. This month at WNCT, we're sharing stories honoring black history. In Raleigh, one barber shop has been open for 94 years. They train barbers on the fine art of the haircut and the fine art of just being good people. Rod Carter has a story of how this shop is more than just a place to cut hair. For Curtis Burston. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, 13 months. 13 months, yeah. Cutting is a calling. I got a college degree from East Carolina, uh, criminal justice. My father was previously incarcerated, and I completed that because he came home three years ago. But he wasn't fulfilled, so always having a heart for cutting hair, he enrolled in Harris Barber College in Raleigh. Being able to give back to the community in a historical school building. Curtis is one of hundreds of men and women who have, through the years, come to Harris to perfect the art of the haircut. Harris Barbering School opened in 1930 in the back of a barber shop. Twelve years later, it moved to where it is now, just a stone's throw from Shaw University. Mr. Samuel Harris started this school for young African-American men. It was only men at the time. He wanted to give them a skill to help them improve their lives economically and create other opportunities for themselves. Harris has the distinction of being the oldest boarding barbering school in the state. When students decide to stay on campus, they room upstairs, although none do live on campus at the time. I went to school here in 1981, graduated, and then they never let me leave. She's been out 15 years, and she's been out, they was in class together here. Now the school is owned and run by Tobias McLean. After changing leadership over the years, he was once a student here himself. What yes, keeps you around? Why is it so important to you? Well, it's, it's, well, life is about caring and sharing. And I've, 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 I've always wanted to be and play a part in helping other young men mm -hmm. uh, reach their potentials, reach some goals. The student population has changed over the years to include all races and women. And beyond learning how to cut, there really is another focus for every one of these students. A lot of people come in, the younger guys learn from the older guys. and. Uh, my barbers, uh, I tell them how important their appearance are because like in this community here, here in Southeast Raleigh, uh, there's a lot of young men, a lot of kids coming here that uh, come from single homes. So uh, appearance and character is very important to me. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy making people happy. And that history and an earnest desire to fulfill his destiny is really what's most cutting edge for Curtis. Instead of going to Wake Tech or something like that, I mean, I rather, I grew up on the South Side of Raleigh as well, so it makes it all come together. And February is Black History Month. WNCT has something special for you coming up on February 23rd. You can join us that Friday at 530 in the afternoon for our honoring Black History Month special. You'll be able to catch impactful stories, including history in Eastern North Carolina in this 30 minute special. Singing in harmony just in time for Valentine's Day. Next on Nine on the Positive Side, we're connecting the community by hearing from Carolina Court Connection. Plus, even though I had lots of I still go out there and wrestle and win. The impact one North Carolina wrestler is leaving on the mat and his teammates. In this week's Positive Side, we're connecting the community and I'm so excited. This is so much fun for us today. We're so excited to welcome Jack, Don, Ben and Bob to talk to us a little bit about Carolina Cord Connection. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. So thank, thank you for really inviting us. Happy to be here. So for those who don't know, what is Carolina Cord Connection? It's a large group of us, and there's several quartets in the bunch, and we're one of those. 
And Valentine's Day is obviously coming up soon. Definitely. We do personal Valentine's for our members. Sometimes they arrange for their friends or family members or people they work with in an office situation. People call or order online and we're happy to go out and sing for them because it, it's a fun experience to go and sing for people and, and watch their faces smile and some of them cry. Or cringe. <laughs> some of them are probably surprised too, right? Oh yeah. oh yeah. How does it make you guys feel that you can be a part of that simple song can bring so much harmony to somebody? It's great. It's fun just to get out and sing in, in, a, in an environment where people turn around and take notice because you don't see this every day. Our group practices every Monday night at the auditorium at, at JC Recreation and Parks. Uh, we're there for an hour and a half and then we usually break off into some quartets. It's free to come out and try. We won't bite or anything like that. <laughs> and you don't necessarily have to know how to read music. You can learn by ear and we, we teach that as well. So where can they get in contact with you guys if they want to join? Just in? show up. Just show up on JC Park one, one Monday evening and say, hey, I want to learn how to sing. So no, come on in. Or you know, on our website, which is um, carolinacourtconnection.com. We can't let you leave here without you not giving us a little preview. Okay. So I'm going to let you guys pick a song and get to it. Do, 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 do. I love coffee, I love tea, I love the Java Java and it loves me. Coffee and tea and the Java and me. A cup, 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 boy. I love Java, sweet and hot. Who's Mrs. Olsen? I'm a coffee pot. Shoot me the pot and I'll pour me a shot. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. Slip me a slug from that wonderful mug And I'll cut a rug till I'm snug in a jug A slice of onion and a raw one Draw one! Waiter, waiter, percolator I love coffee, I love tea I love the Java Java and it loves me Coffee and tea and the Java and me a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup of Boston beans. Soy beans, you know, a little bit of green bean. Collard greens, you know, that I'm not keen. A lot of silly old long. Unless it is a coffee bean. A coffee, coffee bean. Oh, I love Java. Sweet and hot. He likes it hot. Mrs. Olsen, I'm a coffee pot. Shoot me the pot and I'll pour me a shot. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup of java. Slip me a slug from that wonderful mug, and I'll cut a rug till I'm snug in the jug. The rub your nickel in the pot, George. Taking it slow, taking it slow. The waiter, waiter, percolator. I love coffee, I love tea. I love the java, java, and it loves me. Coffee and tea and the job and me. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. Oh. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. You guys want to sing us out? Sure, what do you want? <laughs> Chord busters. Okay. Chord busters. Okay. Let's sing a song, let's sing a song, let harmony be true. Come join the crowd, sing long and loud like good chord busters do. Let's bust a chord, let's bust a chord, good old major chord. Whist Athletes are mostly judged by their wins and losses, but numbers don't even begin to describe what makes a Belmont wrestler unforgettable to his teammates. John Lee tells us why his senior season feels like a victory lap. When it comes to wrestling practice, <laughs> Brandon Lassiter is always on. And for a moment, so was our microphone. Hey. I might tell don't, don't say nothing stupid. Oh, I'm not going to say nothing stupid. As you can tell, his 126 pounds carries a lot of weight on the South Point wrestling team. It's not the size of a dog in a fight. It's a dog that wants to win. Brandon has had that dog in him from day one, and underestimating him would be a huge mistake. Brandon, a.k.a. BB, has been voted co-captain the past two years. Three, two, one. John Warren 
is the wrestling coach. The number one thing I've seen out of him is how he's been an inspiration to his teammates. Even though I had lots of I still go out there and wrestle and win. Whenever he wrestles, Lift the head. his squad rallies around him. His mom, Robin, records every match because even the losses feel like wins. I just feel like he's accomplished the biggest dream of his life. No matter how you look like, no matter what you have, online, if you have enough heart to go out there and wrestle, then it don't matter what you have. He's come a long way since Robin adopted him when he was just a toddler. Now he refuses to be pinned down by doubters. I will try not to cry. Um, very emotional. You never know what your child can achieve unless you, they get out there and do it. Every mother can relate. Now her son grapples with the finality of his senior year. Walking away from South Point wrestling is hard. It's senior night at South Point High School. BB is planning on doing uh, shark research after high school and wants to help coach next year. So I'm going to be turning over the head coach job to BB. <laughs> so if you give me a round of applause for BB. It has been truly an honor to be his teammate for the past three years. As a token of appreciation right. for his dedication. He goes out like a champion, title belt and all. I try to teach the kids it's not just about winning, it's about becoming better and being a teammate. And he definitely, definitely embodies that. Later that senior night, BB was up to the challenge against Ashbrook. If you go out there and you wrestle your hardest. And you come out as a winner. It's the sweetest swan song. Then he celebrates with his guys. This is why it pays to be always on and always ready, but always doesn't last forever. Cherish every moment. And thank you so much for joining us for nine on the positive side this weekend. Of course, let's send you off with an adorable video to close out our show. This little baby blue penguin. It's a first for the Birch Zoo in San Diego. Have a great weekend, everyone. We'll see you next weekend.